So when was the last time that you heard good news? When was the last time you heard good news? Most of you probably didn't think, oh, about seven seconds ago. The good news is what brings us joy. Why do we like to hear good news? Because it gives us joy. It's the automatic response. In the Advent season, we're being awakened again to be ready to hear and receive the good news. The church has much good news for us. But I don't know if we really believe that there is much good news. We might say there's plenty of bad news, fake news, but good news? We want and need good news because it gives us joy. And so on this third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, the command by the church to rejoice, the church is awaking us again to be ready to receive this good news, this news of great joy. She even makes the priest wear rose vestments that people will say are pink. <laughs> because it is a joyful Sunday, a day to rejoice. And so, in order to rejoice and receive the good news that God wants to give us, we have to first acknowledge that we need it. And Isaiah speaks so beautifully about joy. In the first reading, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings, good news, to the poor to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to prisoners. So who is the good news meant for? Those in despair, distressed. It's so hard for us to be open in hearing the good news because our hearts are burdened, we're overwhelmed. We are spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically exhausted from these months of the pandemic and all the chaos besides. It's really hard for us to be open to hearing and recognizing the good news. But Isaiah tells us exactly who the good news is for, who these glad tidings are meant for. The poor, the brokenhearted, the captives, and the prisoners. And so, are we poor? How might we be poor? Are we materially poor? Have we suffered from financial fallout from the pandemic and the shutdowns? Are we poor spiritually, losing all fervor and desire for God and for prayer? If we are poor, then the good news is for us. Brokenhearted. All of us, in one way or the other, have had our hopes crushed and dashed by this time of pandemic. A lot of hopeful things we expected are not happening, or didn't happen, or maybe won't ever happen. The days of these pandemics outfall have been soul-crushing for us. Broken-hearted. People have lost loved ones, some to the coronavirus. I just heard the other day that a young police officer was shot to death in Mount Holly. His twin sister and he were to share a birthday today. Mr. Bill Melton is not with us today because he's assisting in outreach for the police community. Brokenhearted. If we're brokenhearted, 
than the good news is for us. Captive. We're being held captive by social media and political debates and divisiveness in the church. We're seeking out the internet constantly from idleness and anxiety, trying to find more good news. Are we captivated by that? Are we being held captive by our anxieties and our doubts? If we are being held captive, then the good news is for us. Prisoners. Are we in prison, feeling isolated from our family, friends? Relationships have eroded and evaporated in these months of the pandemic. Are we feeling isolated from God and others? Are we in prison by addictions to alcohol or pornography or drugs? All these ways in which we're trying to numb the pain of daily life. Are we in prison? If we are, then the good news is for us. The good news gives us joy. And so if Isaiah were here today, we could say, Hey, Isaiah, where do you find joy? He would say, I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. In my God is the joy of my soul. Thank you, Isaiah. Yes, we do know where to find joy. In God. And he's not the only one who proclaims joy to us today on this Gaudete Sunday. It's also the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Paul. We well, say, well, where is the Blessed Virgin Mary in the readings? Our responsorial psalm today actually wasn't a psalm. It was a passage from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 1 called the Magnificat Prayer. The song of praise from Our Lady to Elizabeth during the visitation. And she says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Joy, true joy in God. She proclaims it. St. Paul, he has a lot to say about joy also. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Well, how do we do that? He says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks to God in all circumstances. This is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And so our Advent time, we have been working on our prayer life, on our daily time of private, personal, mental, meditative prayer with God. We said 15 minutes we were starting, at least that, daily, and so now on this third Sunday of Advent, we realize something else about prayer now. What is it? It's this. Prayer opens the soul to receive God's joy. Prayer opens the soul to receive God's joy. If I'm not praying, I can't receive what he wants to give me. Prayer opens the soul to receive God's joy. Then we can say, in God is the joy of my soul. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The Almighty has done great things for me. I rejoice in the Lord always. In all circumstances I give thanks because it's will of, for me in Christ Jesus. So as we spend this time, keep going to our prayer time, in our place of prayer, in our homes, wherever that may be, where we're alone with the Lord. It's important to see how powerful the Word of God is, Scripture. You can take a verse from this Sunday's readings to our prayer time and really meditate on it and let it continue to stir our souls. And so in our private time of prayer, we should have, we should have the Scriptures nearby, handy, ready for us. Prayer opens the soul. To receive God's joy. And what is that? 
It's not a what, it's a who. Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. The joy of the father is the son. That's, that's the good news. There it is. It's him. The good news is Jesus Christ. And so as we prepare now in the weeks ahead to enter into the Christmas season, am I really ready for this good news? Is the birth of Jesus, does it matter to me? Am I ready? Do I care? Do I believe? Prayer, each and every day, is getting us ready this whole Advent season to open our hearts to receive the joy that God wants to give us, which is his Son. And this joy is not an emotional, fleeting, superficial happiness, but rather it's a deep peace and an abiding trust in God that no matter what goes on out there, there's peace in here and trust in here for God because my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In the Lord is the joy of my soul. Terrible things will continue to happen, but where will we find true joy in the midst of all of that? Him, in the Lord, in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. The Emmanuel, who is God with us. And we're getting close. So let us prepare our hearts and minds to daily receive the good news that is Jesus Christ. And then we will have deep peace, deep trust. We will have it because we will have him. So we ask our Blessed Mother, who is the model of prayer and the woman of perpetual joy, to pray for us. We don't give up on our personal prayer lives and our relationship with the Lord. That we too want to have our hearts open, ready to receive God's joy. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.